Hello class, uh, we shall now continue with our lesson on salt preparation. Alright, just as a recap. Okay, when we want to prepare salts, we need to consider whether they are soluble or insoluble. Uh, when it is insoluble, the method that we will use is called precipitation, where we react two soluble reagents, okay, then we filter to obtain the insoluble salt. And we also learn for soluble salts that are not spa salts. Okay, the method uh, we call it is excess method because we will react acid with either excess metal, carbonate or base. Right. And of course the procedure after reacting, you must perf uh, after filtering the excess region, you must perform crystallization on the filtrate. Right, so we're going to move on to the last method. Okay, which is titration, used for spa salts. Okay, so turning back. All right, so for spa salts, the method is called titration. Okay, the unique thing about this is because they are spa salts, and as you have learned, all sodium, potassium and ammonium salts are soluble and so are the bases okay so everything is soluble okay the salt is soluble the starting material are both soluble so everything is soluble so to react for this titration you need an acid Okay, namely the three acids, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid, and a soluble base, okay, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. Okay, and sometimes you can even use the carbonate, okay, because as you have learned, the spa carbonates are soluble. Okay, so titration involves using a pipette, burette, and indicator to find out the exact amount of acid to neutralize an alkali or carbonate. Okay, this is the basic function of titration. Okay. Alright, it's not titration is a method not just to prepare spa salts, but titration is the method to actually find the exact amount of acid to neutralize the alkali or carbon. Right. Okay, later you learn that you need to repeat the titration without the indicator. And then you will perform crystallization to obtain pure crystals of the salt. Okay, so now we need to use an indicator. Okay, uh, why do we need to use it? Okay, because all the reagents and products are colorless. Okay, all right. Next time when I bring you to the lab, you'll see that all the acid and the bases they are all colorless. Okay, when you react, you get salt and water which are also colorless. Okay, and there's no way for you to tell okay, whether it is only salt and water. Okay, so, we need a way to know that we have reacted the right amount of acid with the alkali. Not too much and not too little. Okay, so, uh, the indicator that we usually use is called methyl orange. Okay, so, in alkali solutions, the methyl orange is yellow. In neutral solutions, the methyl orange is orange. And in acidic solutions, the methyl orange is red in color. Okay, uh, please remember this. So in alkali, it will be yellow. In neutral, is orange. And in acidic, the methyl orange is red in color. Okay, all right. Then we'll move on to the actual procedure. Alright, now consider the reaction to prepare sodium nitrate salt. So we need the acid since it is sodium nitrate. We need nitric acid. Okay, plus, and for the base, we need sodium hydroxide. And we'll get sodium nitrate. And water. Right, for the procedure itself, okay, we'll first fill a burette with dilute nitric acid. 
Okay, then we'll use a pipette okay, to take 25.0 cm cube of sodium hydroxide into the conical flask. We will then add 1 to 2 drops of metal orange into the sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, so now after adding the metal orange, what should the solution be? What color? If you remember from just now, okay, it should be yellow in color. Okay, then we will add dilute nitric acid slowly from the burette until the solution turns orange. Okay. At this point, this indicates the solution is neutral. Take note the amount of acid that was added. Okay, so example. Okay, let's say I keep adding, 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 adding. Then I realize that it takes about okay, 28.3 cm cube of acid okay, to make it orange, which is neutral. All right. So, what happens if too much acid is added? Alright. Okay. If too much acid is added, okay, the solution will turn red. Okay. Since it turns red, okay, you have added too much acid. Alright, so you've gone beyond the neutral point. Okay, so uh, 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 need to repeat uh, titration again. Okay, all right. Uh, this is actually a, a common uh, error. Okay, that happens when you do titration. Okay, for combined chemistry. Okay, you don't need to do titration. Okay, but for if you take pure chemistry, okay, uh, you need to do titration, and if you exceed the neutral point, okay, you will need to do it all over again. All right, yeah, which can be frustrating, uh, but it's okay. Uh, everyone is learning. All right, so, okay, but if you didn't, and you already reached the neutral point, since it is already neutral, okay, can we perform crystallization at this point? What do you think? Okay, all right. You cannot perform crystallization at this point, all right? Because okay, there is now it is neutral. Okay, it will contain salt, water, specifically sodium nitrate and water, and also the indicator. So if you perform crystallization at this point, okay, the indicator also will crystallize with the salt. Okay, uh, all sodium salts are white in color. Yeah, and if you do crystallization at this point, okay, you will get orange salt uh, because you have the orange colored indicator. So, no, okay, the solution contains indicator. Okay, so once again, I repeat. Okay, you will fill up the conical flask with 25 cm cube of sodium hydroxide using a pipette. Okay, then you will slowly add acid from the burette. Okay, at first, this is yellow from the alkali. And slowly, you add until it becomes orange. Okay, then we take note what amount of acid that was added, example 28.3 okay, that will be orange at this point, you cannot use, do crystallization okay, because the solution contains indicator okay, which will contaminate the salt that we want to prepare so what do we do? Okay, we will repeat the titration without using metal orange okay, then we will use the same amount of Alkali 25.0 cm cube using the pipette. Okay, and we will use 
the same amount of acid in step 5. Okay, since okay, the first part, we already know that we need 28.3 cm cube of acid. Of acid. Yeah, so we can now no need to add slowly. Okay, we can just simply add 28.3 of acid to 25.0 and we will know it's neutral okay, because we already done it on the uh, first part. And this time we didn't use indicator. Yeah. After that, we can perform crystallization. Okay, then the last steps are all the same steps of performing crystallization, which is heating the solution to obtain the saturated solution, lift the solution to cool and crystallize, filter to obtain the crystals, wash the crystals with a small amount of cold distilled water, pat dry the crystals between pieces of filter paper. All right, yeah, so that's the titration method to prepare spa salts. Okay, for combined chemistry, all right, um, they don't usually ask, okay, for the entire procedure, okay, these 11 steps, okay, but you do need to understand the concept behind it, okay, yeah, so for you guys, please focus on the first two steps that I mentioned, which is precipitation and access method, all right, so technically we are done with this topic, all right, so let's do a comparison between the three methods okay the first method that i taught you precipitation second method the excess method okay so you guys focus on these two okay and the last method which is titration for spa salts okay so for the insoluble salt precipitation okay both reagents are soluble then the product is insoluble okay for Excess method, the acid use is soluble, but the other reagent is insoluble and the product is soluble. For titration, both reagent soluble, product also soluble. Okay, precipitation, the reaction is fast. Okay, if you refer to the SLS lesson, okay, the uh, precipitate forms almost immediately and can be easily seen. Right. For the excess method, Okay, when the reaction is complete, you'll get the excess insoluble reagent. Then you know that it is already completed. All right, but for titration, okay, you can't see anything, so you require an indicator. All right, so for precipitation, you will need to filter, and the product is in the residue. For soluble salt, you also need to filter to remove the excess insoluble reagent, and this time the product is in the filtrate. Right. For the titration, you don't need to filter because everything is soluble. And lastly, you don't need to do crystallization for precipitation. You just need to wash the residue and dry. But for these two, since they are soluble and inside the solution, okay, you require crystallization. All right, so this is a further summary okay, for you to understand. Okay, also some exceptions such as copper and silver metal cannot be used okay for the base you use metal oxide for the excess method for the alkali you use metal hydroxide all right so last part last page okay uh, we shall now do a summary of what you have learned Alright, so basically, okay, state whether the salts are soluble or insoluble, what method to use, and suggest two chemicals to use to prepare the salt. Alright, so we have the precipitation excess method, and then titration for the soluble salt, specifically for spa salts. Alright, okay, pause here. Okay, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all right. Take about okay six minutes or so. Okay, to complete this part. Okay. Okay, I hope you have finished uh, this short exercise. All right. So for the first one, barium sulfate, 
okay it's insoluble so the matter is precipitation so you'll need something nitrate and sodium something in this case will be barium nitrate and sodium sulfate okay once again okay as long as you have two soluble ones okay the method should work All right but i like to uh, fix it to be something nitrate because all nitrate salts are soluble and sodium something because all sodium salts are soluble all right next sodium chloride okay it's a soluble salt specifically a spa salt so you need titration so you need the alkali sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid right for iron 2 nitrate it is a soluble salt but not a spa salt so we will need excess method okay so for excess method you can either use the metal the base or the carbonate so it's either iron iron 2 oxide or iron 2 carbonate and of course since iron 2 nitrate you need nitric acid right copper 2 carbonate okay right all carbonates are insoluble except for the spa carbonates so they are insoluble you require precipitation so once again something nitrate and sodium something so it's copper 2 nitrate and sodium carbonate Potassium sulfate, your spa salt, you require titration. So potassium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. And lastly, the soluble zinc sulfate, which requires the excess method. So it's either the metal, base or carbonate with sulfuric acid. Alright, zinc, zinc oxide or zinc carbonate. Alright, so if you can do this portion okay of the notes okay um, you should be more or less ready for this topic okay and also more or less ready for this section in your wa3 okay all right so uh, since we have some time okay please take the time to complete uh, worksheet 11a sorts okay uh, i placed um, a of them in my pigeon home I also mentioned it in the whatsapp group okay I hope you all have distributed it among yourselves all right, so uh, take this time uh, whatever remaining time you have in the lesson okay to finish this up all right, so the next lessons I will go through worksheet 10a and also worksheet 11a all right okay take care everyone